Manchester United nil, Tottenham Hotspur 3 in a truly pathetic, embarrassing performance from the team in red. This was absolutely horrific. So bad, in fact, that Tottenham produced an XG performance, which is the best we have seen from an away side in the Premier League for over two years. That's how bad this was for Manchester United. There was literally nothing good about the performance. There is not one positive we can take, apart from Onana's good shot stopping. Apart from that, United were pathetic, both on the ball and off the ball. Complete uh, catastrophe. Horrendous from start to finish. So what was the problem? The theme for the game was set incredibly early on, and that's without even talking about the goal. Just the approach to the game, the way that both teams were playing. Manchester United were trying to play out from the back, and that's good, that's okay, we encourage that normally. And what we would do is use a similar structure to what we've seen in recent weeks. Kobe Mainu is situated a little bit higher. Diogo Dallo inverts. In recent weeks, this has worked. However, there is always one problem when you invert your fullback so early. You have a lack of width, and it's therefore difficult to stretch the opposition. And this re worked really well for Spurs, because Solanke could come on to Delict, Brennan Johnson can come in into this sort of position here, Kulisevsky can push up to Dallo, Madison on Ugarte, and they go man for man like this. And Romero is there, if needed, to step up and pick up our extra player in midfield. There were also situations, though, where it was more of a back four from United. And again, Solanke would be in the middle. He would split one way. Brennan Johnson would curve in from the right. And then Pedro Porro would come up, connect the press. And again, Spurs are going super aggressive all over the pitch. And United had absolutely no answer for it. There was, there was no solution. There was no moment where United looked good. We saw a couple of the concerns that I raised in the summer with the signings we made. I ranked United's transfer window a 6 out of 10 for a reason. We saw flaws here. De Ligt really struggled on the ball under pressure. And Ugarte did as well. Now again, give them time. Let's not be too harsh. Let them get up to speed. But it wasn't good enough. And this set the theme for the game incredibly early on because United actually simply couldn't get out from the back. There was no hope of ever getting a foothold on the ball. United really struggled. As a result, when United did eventually get sort of moments of possession, the intent was very clear. Let's get the ball forward very quickly. And that was obvious. We knew that was going to be the case because Garnacho started on the right-hand side, Rashford started on the left with Bruno Fernandes in the 10. When you have that little structure together, you know that we're going to be playing forward quite quickly. And again, it's okay to do that, but it can't be your only plan. But it felt like it was for Manchester United. When United got the ball, it was played forward so unbelievably quickly. And when you are trying to do that, you are playing high-risk, high-reward passes, but difficult passes, passes that don't regularly come off. So therefore, you lose the ball all the time, and we'll discuss United's defensive problems shortly. But on the ball, United had nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we played the ball forward so quickly that even if it did work, even if we did complete the pass, we find Marcus Rashford on the left-hand side. Because we'd played it so quickly, and we're then asking our wingers to be so direct instantly, instantly taking a player on, they were often like 1v3. And I don't care how good you are as a dribbling winger, you're going to struggle with that situation because it's the same for Garnacho on the other side as well. And also Garnacho when he played on the left later in the game. They're 1v2, they're 1v3 at times. It's impossible. United on the ball was so bad. This is the worst I've seen United in possession for me for years. There was nothing in that first half. Absolutely nothing positive. No ability to play out from the back. No ability to control the ball in midfield. In fact, we didn't ever really pass into midfield. Xerxes had a poor game on the ball and... In terms of, like I said, the final third, it was isolated. We were kind of waiting for moments of magic that didn't come. It was pathetic. Now, obviously, we can look at Ten Hag for a lot of that. There has to be more patterns of play in place. The structure has to be better. More focus on playing through the middle. The intent has to be to control again, not to always kill Spurs with every pass. But we've also got to look at the players because individually, they were absolutely terrible. But my bigger problem was actually the defensive side because... It gets worse. So if Spurs were a hard-working, relatively cohesive pressing side that suffocated the opposition, Manchester United were quite the opposite. United's high press was horrendous, the whole defensive shape was awful. We, we didn't get close, and again, individually, it was really bad. Starting off with Vicario in goal. Now, we know what Spurs are going to do. They always do the exact same thing. We didn't get the chance to do a tactical preview this week, but if we had, we would have known all this was coming because I had all of the prep work done. Spurs done nothing new here. This is what they always do. They always play like this. This wasn't surprising. We should have been ready. So what does it look like? Two centre-backs splitting slightly wider. Udogi on the left doesn't really get involved in the build-up from left-back. He pushes a little bit higher. Poro on the right has a bit more freedom to get involved. Benton Kerr is going to drop as a solo pivot a lot of the time. Now what United done was played with a 4-4-2. Like this. The problem was, 
if we kind of quickly look at this as a fairly basic structure, right? Let's almost ignore for a second that these are footballers on the pitch. Let's take a look at where the obvious space is going to be. Right in the middle of the pitch, Ben Tenker has all the space in the world. Right, you can see that Spurs have an extra central midfielder. So that's going to be a problem for United at some point if we are not intense with the way that we press or if we don't drop back into a block. United were in this sort of in-between thing that we've seen so often under Eric Ten Hag where we are kind of in one moment half getting close to players but the rest of the team aren't really. We open up gaps, there's big spaces to cover and ultimately it's absolutely awful. It's absolutely pathetic because what could happen is Romero would get the ball Bruno doesn't want to be aggressive on Van de Ven because he knows that Benton Kerr is here. So he drops a little bit deeper. The ball gets moved across. Bruno kind of half comes out, but there's no real intensity. Benton Kerr can pick the ball up and he can move the ball forward. It's that easy for Spurs. It really is. Then we've got another problem because now as Benton Kerr has time on the ball, Spurs are now 3v2 in the middle. And if Ugarte comes out to be aggressive, Madison has time. But if not, Benton Kerr has time. This is a massive problem for Manchester United and we saw it throughout the game. You can see Kobi Mainu and Ugarte tied up a little bit deeper here and United with the front two not really able to get onto Benton Kerr. If they couldn't apply pressure to the ball, what the front two should have done is actually just sat on Benton Kerr, blocked passes into him completely. But again, the intention from United is always confused. It's always in between. Another sort of example of the team being a little bit in between is actually when we did go a bit more aggressive with the front two. You can see Xerxes here. He has made the effort to go further forward and apply pressure to Romero on the ball on that side of the defence, the ball goes backwards. Bruno Fernandes sprints forward to try and engage in the press. Look how far away Bruno is, right? He's never going to get there. But also look at the four behind him. They're not even close to being able to support him. In terms of three Spurs players, we've got one in here. Completely open, completely unmarked. And we've also got one here. That's all. It's just so bad. You're never going to win that. I don't know how these Manchester United players are meant to win a ball in that situation. It's never going to happen. Now, is this instruction from Ten Hag? I genuinely don't know. I don't know. Is, is this player decision? Because surely Bruno shouldn't be going sprinting after that ball. Surely he should be aware of the structure behind him. If this is instruction, the problem might be worse than we think. This, this is really bad. Van de Ven is able to receive the ball on the left side. Garnacho is going to try and get up and press because for some reason we're now deciding, yeah, let's go press him. But we are so slow, so late to every single ball here. And as a result, Spurs move the ball down the line. We lose our 1v1 there. We try to connect the press with the fullback. This is Masrawi. He loses his battle. And then we've got the next one. Ugarte loses his battle as well. Sorry, this was Delict. Loses his battle. And Spurs move the ball forward and eventually hit the post. It's really bad for United, but this wasn't the worst we saw because the goal is unbelievable. We've got the goal here. Van de Ven has just won the ball about halfway inside his half right. And we know what he's going to do. He's going to carry the ball forward. He does this quite a lot. He done it the other week, actually, for an assist as well. Where did Manchester United go wrong? First of all, I want to look at Masrawi. For me, his positioning is far too wide. My instruction as a coach would always be, when the ball is in this sort of situation, when your team is in transition defence, ideally, when the team is stretched, your fullback should be inside the pitch compared to the ball. You should be narrower than what the ball is. But you can see Masrawi is actually wider than the ball. Now, this makes him vulnerable to a pass in behind into that gap. That's an issue. But also, just generally speaking, there is a massive gap between fullback and centre back. And we know this is the attack, uh, the space, sorry, that Van de Ven eventually attacks. The next problem for me is in here. Ugarte just has to engage in this situation so much earlier. And Bruno has to cover that central midfielder in the middle. Ugarte has to be aggressive. You're a protective midfielder. Come and protect us. And Bruno has to filter into the middle. It's quite simple. That's all United need to do here to protect the middle of the pitch. But we don't do that. Spurs move the ball forward. You can see Ugarte never got close, to be honest. Never got close. He anticipated this way too late. Way too late. Doesn't get close. Van de Ven goes into that space that we were talking about. And then maybe the worst part of the lot is at the top of the pitch there. Diogo Dallo. It's embarrassing. You can see top left what minute this is. Two minutes 32 into the game. He's not tired. He's not fatigued. It's not difficult for him to get back here. He wasn't even caught out of position, by the way, because the whole way he was right there with Brennan Johnson. This was a choice not to track the man, and that's not really forgivable. He is very lucky we don't have any other fullbacks at the moment, because if I was manager and I saw that two minutes into a game, you wouldn't be playing again for a couple of weeks. I'll put it like that. He may have been good so far this season, and I feel that he has. That is unforgivable two minutes into a game. It cannot happen. Dallow's quick. He's got energy. There is no excuse for this. He is absolutely nowhere near. He's jogging the whole way, and he ends up miles off. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. The players were really bad. 
Now, obviously, those last few clips, I've kind of spoken a lot about how the players were quite poor. And I think they really were. I think they let themselves down. But what we cannot get away from the fact is Ten Hag set his team up really badly. Ten Hag also got it horribly wrong. So in terms of who is to blame, all the players were poor, apart from Onana in goal. And the manager got it wrong. Postacoglu outcoached Eric Ten Hag from minute one to minute 90 throughout the game. Because like we said, we've got United going for this half-press sort of thing, which allows Spurs to move past the first line. And then we've got Benton Curry midfield, just completely overloading. There was a massive problem for United. We never matched them in midfield. And that's where I sympathise with the players a little bit. Because you're never going to look that energetic in midfield when you are at minimum one man down. If you are two against three, but sometimes it was worse. Sometimes we had two United midfielders up against four Spurs players in these central areas. They're never going to succeed there. The manager set the players up to fail. They were always going to fail once United were in a shape this open in the middle of the park. So Ten Hag set his players up for failure. He let his players down a little bit. And the ways in which Spurs could manipulate this United defence were endless. So one example is Madison dropping deep on the left, picking up the ball. We knew this would happen. Udogi makes an easy underlapping run like this, and it takes Garnacho narrow like so. Madison now has all the time in the world on the ball. Now we've got Solanke can come in and create an overload in the middle of the park. We've got Benton Kerr who can do it. We've got Kulisevsky. Pedro Porro is going to make runs inside as well. Spurs also have incredibly easy access out wide to Werner, but also Johnson on the other side. And, you know, they're good wingers from Spurs, but they're not one versus one specialists. But the United fullbacks were terrible defensively. Pathetic defensively, they were so easy to beat, particularly Masraoui. Werner would just knock the ball and run and he, and he was done. It shouldn't be that easy. Werner's quick, but it shouldn't be that easy. Masraoui got away with one yesterday. He was really bad. Easy access out wide for Spurs all day against poor fullbacks. Success for Spurs. But also in the middle of the park, again, they just constantly pulled us about here. Our front two were completely ineffective, never got close. And then we've got Paul Kobi Mainu and Ugarte, who didn't have great games individually, but they were completely outnumbered. Sometimes, like I said, it's Udogi, Bentenker, Kulisevsky, Solanke and Madison against two players essentially. Because Garnacho is tracking but he's fairly passive in the work that he's doing. And this is why Spurs completely took control of the game. Because tactically, they were set up, uh, set up better to always have extra players here. You can see it here. Three Spurs players, two Manchester United midfielders. It's a problem. Move on to this clip. Lots of Spurs players in the centre of the park and you've got to feel sorry for these two. What are they meant to do? Granted, Bruno is helping on this occasion, but you can still see so many players around the Manchester United midfielders. Just two central midfielders for United, completely overloaded all the time. It could be Solanke dropping in like this. The Sandra Martinez struggled to, to get close enough with him, as did the Lit. But also, in other areas of the pitch, it could be Benton Kerr being the free man with time on the ball to get his head up and play a pass. It's so bad. It is so, so bad from Manchester United. And again, it's the players, they were all so poor. The, the intensity, the body language was... I don't want to go into it, to be honest. We might get banned if I use the words I want to use. It, it was unforgivable. The, the player intensity, pathetic. The player quality on the ball, pathetic. The execution was so bad. Individually, to a man, it was so bad. Tactically, though, Eric Ten Hag, I don't know what you're thinking. Because he's set his players up for failure. Though. He's put them into a system and gone... You're going to go lose unless you can make a miracle happen. That's not what a manager should do. That's not top level management. And it's a problem. It's a, it's a big, big problem. I think over the next few weeks, Ineos have got a decision to make. It feels a little bit like the, the end for Ten Hag, nearly. Nearly. I think he's got a big seven days. But it weren't a good start to those seven days yesterday. United were played off the park and never looked close. Spurs had over 5xG. Onana kept us in that game. And we were 3-0 now. It was really bad. It was really bad. Those are my thoughts anyway. It's my opinion. I want to hear yours. Get in the comments down below. Who was to blame for United? Were Spurs just that good or was it that terrible from United? I know what I think. Where do we go from here? Let me know what you think in the comments. In terms of today, we're finished there. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. I don't know. As always, I'll see you in the next one.